Hey there, Craze here. What's up? Were you ever in the Ed's World fandom? I was. When I was younger and had no ability to think before I did anything on the internet, I basically just did whatever. If you couldn't tell. Now, I don't have access to my old account and can't erase the evidence of that. <laughs> if you remember any of that, I am deeply sorry. I, I was a fucking degenerate. But you may have seen some of my fandom stuff. A good chunk of that fandom stuff involved AUs. And one of my many AUs was called Of Flames and Shadows, uh, as I called it. It's like an Ed's World Element AU that was incredibly edgy. This AU followed the story of four kings. Ed, the king of air and ruler of aura. He paints the skies with the wind as his paintbrush, using his powers as a form of expression and as art at festivals. Tom, the King of Shadows, ruler of what used to be Marina. He finds no point in using his form of magic, instead opting for a silver sword crafted by hand. Matt, ruler of Terra, with the most powerful form of magic at his hands, passed through his family. And lastly, the Lost King, Tord, the Fire King, ruler of Azar, the king who ran away from the Four Kingdoms to hide from a cruel and unbearing world, once a soldier or warrior ruler, now but a tale told by his old subjects. As cool of all of this sounded to me at the time, the bulk of this AU lies in a playlist lost to me being a dinkus and locking myself out of my own channel. But I wrote a lot of stuff down because cringe, and I decided to use that old lore to make my own original creation. Because how the fuck was this in Ed's World AU? Before we get to that though, let's cover what this video will be doing. Basically, I'm going to redesign my versions of these characters and make original ones. This will include Ed, Matt, Tom, Tord, and another character we'll get to later. I'll also talk about some lore and design choices I made. And you'll also get to see the struggle of drawing these on a five-year-old iPad! The world building and stuff is all original, so no rewrite or anything, because this was actually surprisingly solid for lore I wrote when I was like 12. That being said, let's get to the redesigns. First starting off with Ed. In the original AU, Ed was an air elemental king. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you make him plant? It's- it's green! It's- it's green- Well, that is actually lore importance. That has significant lore relevance. I don't know what to tell you. With the air element in mind, I wanted to introduce some different species into this whole AU. So, I decided to make him an interesting little bird hybrid thing. I don't know what- they're called when they have the wings for ears, but oh well, he he's one of those now. Beyond that fact, I mostly made a design with the idea that he's kind of like the leader of the group. He's the outgoing one. He's like basically the main character. Wow, it's almost like that's who I based him off of. Crazy. Speaking of who I based him off of, he's probably the one who's closest to his original counterpart, mostly because I felt like Given how Ed already looks, it just worked for the character. I don't really know how to describe it, I just couldn't imagine him looking any other way. Which does remind me, I did try to make redesigns of these before and put it up on my old channel, but they were very... not good. <laughs> Which leads me to the actual character himself. So, in the original story, well, technically, before the beginning, Ed and Tord got in a fight because Ed over here is loved by absolutely everybody in the kingdom and Tord, ooh, ooh, overshadowing and edgy, ooh, ooh. And so they got in a fight, Ed accidentally burns part of Tord's face off while trying to counter an attack, and Tord runs away faster than my dad did when he had to get milk. This led to Ed basically having to lie to all of his subjects in the kingdom so nobody was all like, oh, you're a dick. And later on, when the story is actually beginning, Ed and Tom get into a fight at a festival, 
and this leads to the truth coming out in front of everybody and there's basically an entire like war about to brew basically the whole reason why it would be so bad for ed to admit that is because he was the one who united all of the kingdoms so basically like imagine making a peace treaty and then somebody shoots the other person at the meeting with all of that lore being poured onto you, I would like to introduce you to Eric, the King of Aura. Now, let us move on to Matt. Okay, I do not know why, but this was the design that was hardest for me to draw once it got to the digital drawing stage. His head would, like, shrink at one point, which you'll see probably soon, and also just my screen kept acting up and it's probably because my tablet is like five years old but this was also just really hard for all the tiny details i had to add given in this wonderful lore i have i made him an elf and i like to imagine that they have a bunch of embellishments and whatnot that they've collected and they kind of wear to be like hey i'm better than you <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It also came from a huge lack of ideas. There. That's when it happened. That's when his head fucking shrank. Luckily enough, it wasn't so bad, so I was able to fix it and maintain an okay quality, but you can see how heavily pixelated his head is in the final product. Outside of my difficulties drawing this man, Let's talk about his actual story importance. Matt came from a long line of really powerful magic users. Basically, his family was born with the ability to use the strongest form of magic. This put him into a lot of familial trauma of having to basically be the best magical king there was. Now, as I said, everybody loved Eric, and this is basically leading Matt to fucking hate himself. Oh my god, hashtag relatable. So when the conflict starts, Matt brings it upon himself to try and fix everything so that way he can get some sort of recognition for doing something good and maybe get people to like him. He's actually technically the reason that Tord ends up being found when all three of them go out on a search because basically he was all like, Tom, things aren't always good. Um, that, it, it is how it is. <laughs> oh my God, I did not think of it that way. Let's go find my obligatory gay lover. Need I remind you I made this when I was 12? So basically the rundown is Matt is the most powerful in terms of magical ability, but basically everyone in the kingdom is like, okay, why the fuck is he a ruler? And so everyone is all like, oh my god, Eric, you are so cool and awesome and wow. And this leads to Matt fucking hating himself, and so when everything starts, he fixes everything. whoop de doop de doo And he still didn't get recognition, even in the after story I made. This poor man got abused so much for the sake of plot points in this AU, it's not fucking funny. In terms of design, though, really all I did was just make him a pretty boy. I mean... Do we really have enough of those anymore? Where's all the pretty men? Normalize pretty men today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having way too much fun with this commentary, especially given this is literally just doing what 12 year old me did, but better and also way less fucking cringy. Which actually leads me to something. Let me know if you want to see, like, an, in a nutshell for this, because it would actually be really fun to make one, given how fucking crazy this story was. But enough of that. Everybody, meet Atticus. And let's move on to Tom. This is the part where the obligatory Tom Tord comes in, because... 
Tom and Tord have to like each other very, very much as this is an AU made by a 12 year old. Beyond that aspect though, I think Tom was one of the most interesting characters as he was basically my favorite when I was fixated on Ed's world. So basically, he's the king of shadows and he comes from a lineage of magic users that have like celestial magic, so the moon, the sun, so on and so forth. Due to the expectations of this, he never really liked to use his magic, hence why you see him holding a sword here. He made it himself so he didn't have to rely solely on his magic. In terms of design, he is probably the closest to my first versions of the redesigns. I also decided to make him a different species. I wouldn't know what I would call this, but yeah, it gives some variety. Beyond all of that, I do have to say he is probably my favorite out of all of these characters. And with that being said, I would like to introduce all of you to Synthus, the King of the Shadows. And now for his obligatory gay lover, Tord. So you thought the Shadow King was going to be the Owl the Edge character. Well, you were wrong! Basically, Tord is the king of fire. Before everything happened, the Fire Kingdom was known for its huge and strong army. His surprisingly good father figure waged war with any kingdom he could, even if he felt like, oh, we could get defeated, oh well. This led to when the time came and the kingdoms were to be unified, Tord was basically like, are you sure? We literally fought for years, multiple times. The only people that the Fire Kingdom did not fight were the Celestial Magic users. So you know what that means. Hey, my son likes your son. You can help me colonize and we can unite our kingdoms and overthrow everyone else. Our obligatory gay lovers have known each other since childhood. And once the big conflict came and Dord ran away, oh no. Sad gay. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think I was an excellent writer. So with all those story aspects in mind, I threw them together into a blender and forced them to hold hands. And that's how we have this design. One thing I do have to give myself credit for, that fire cape has carried over through every single evolution of this design. Back on the topic of this edgelord, ladies, gentlemen, unidentified creatures, I would like to introduce you to Helios, King of Fire. Up next, the kid he's gonna steal from the woods. So, do you remember John? Yeah, he's the lore significance I was talking about. So technically, he was supposed to be leading the Earth Kingdom, Terra, instead of Matt? But, whoopsie daisies, stealing children! <laughs> uh, okay, okay. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, he was raised by rogues because he was stolen. <laughs> And later on in his life, those rogues were all like, Hey, we're gonna go do something. We're leaving you behind for your safety and not because we don't want to deal with responsibility anymore, okay? A few birthdays later, he has abandonment issues! How fun! And then in the story, he gets found by Helios and Helios is all like, Hey, we both have issues. You're my son now. And then later on, when everybody finds Helios, they also find out, Oh! This is a child! Okay, I guess this is our son now. With that being said, on a design aspect, he's mostly retained what he already had in his former designs, besides the floofy hair. And also, he's an actual kid now, and not an aged-down adult. Everybody, meet Fern. The Lost Child and Plant Prince. Alrighty! 
that's it for today. I didn't get to completely cover everything I wanted, but I got the most important stuff out of the way, so that's good. I'll probably be posting some animatics with these guys soon because I absolutely adore them and I'm really proud of how I was able to turn not original characters at all into more original characters, so yeah. Although there's still some aspects that obviously originate from the original Ed's World cast, I think that adds a little bit of a charm to them, you know? Like, they didn't start off magically as their own characters, they had something to kind of jumpstart off of. I hope to do more videos like these, and hell, maybe I'll revamp some of my original characters. With all that said, thanks for watching. If you're interested in more content like this, feel free to subscribe. And if there's any feedback you think you can provide, go right ahead. I would love to make my content better for you guys. I think next time I'll definitely have more of a script because technically this wasn't supposed to be my first official video. So yeah, I'll keep that in mind for next time so I don't sound like I'm rambling. Unless you like that, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, I'm glad you made it this far, and see you in hell.